Section 2.1, titled Solving Linear Equations and Inequalities. Um, most of this you've probably no doubt seen before. We'll look at how to solve multi-step linear equations and, and same multi-step linear inequalities. Uh, with the inequalities, we'll look at putting the solutions on number lines and also writing the solutions in interval notation. And that interval notation might, might be new for you, um, may not. We'll start with a few examples of solving linear equations. Uh, the first example, example one, uh, begins with the need for a distributive property. Uh, we're going to take the 6 and distribute it inside the parentheses. So we'll have 6x minus 24 equals 30. Now I'll go ahead and write out a lot of the steps here on these first couple problems. Uh, the minus 24 I'm going to move to the opposite side by adding 24 to both sides. So that gives me 6x equals 54. I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Leaves me with x equals 9. Next problem, no distributive property in the next problem. It's just going to be moving terms around so that we can isolate the x's and isolate the non-x's. Um, so I need to take, I'm going to take my x's to this side. I'm going to take my non-x's combine over to this side. So it'll look like this to start. I'm going to add 7. To both sides. I'm going to subtract 2x to both sides. So the 2x's cancel, the 7's cancel, and now we can combine our like terms. 5x minus 2x makes 3x, 5 plus 7 makes 12, and now we finish this by dividing by the 3. So we end up with x equals 4. This next problem, there is a typo on the slide. It should all be variables of x. So change this p to an x, if you would. And we're ready to begin. I start with distributive property. The 4 is going to distribute. And here, the minus sign treat it as a negative 1 will distribute. So we get 32 minus 4x minus 7 and when we have minus the minus it becomes plus x equals 22. Hey, okay, now on the left hand side I'm going to add like terms together. So don't do opposite signs or anything like that. Just put them together as they are. 32 minus 7 is 25. 4x plus x is minus 3x equals 22. And now I can take the 25 and subtract it to the opposite side of the equal sign. leaving us with negative 3x equals negative 3. We'll divide both sides by the negative 3, giving us x equals 1. Okay, I want to look at a couple of special case type of problems. They're called identities or contradictions. Um, so I've got an example one of each of them. Uh, we'll work through both of these here. Um, I'm going to begin this problem by distributing the negative sign and also combining my like terms on this side. So we'd end up with negative x minus 9 equals negative 5 minus x. I am going to add the x 
to both sides. Notice that it cancels on both sides of the problem. So I have negative 9 equals negative 5. Uh, there's no x to solve for, and obviously negative 9 does not equal negative 5, so this is an example of a contradiction. And when that happens, the implication is that this problem has no solution. Okay. Let's try the other one. I'm again going to begin the same way. I'm going to have a distributive property here, some like terms I can combine on the right side. So we have 2x minus 12 equals 2x minus 12. Now you might see it right now that both sides of the equation are identical to each other, completely identical to each other, therefore making this what we call an identity. Um, but if you didn't see it, let's say you just keep on working, um, you might think to yourself, okay, I, I generally bring the x's over to the left and I bring the numbers over to the right. So if I do that, I add 12 here. Um, I notice that the, the terms I wanted to cancel do, of course, but the other terms cancel as well. Uh, we end up with 0 equals 0. Uh, again, this is an example of an identity, and this is a type of problem where we have infinite, infinitely many solutions. Okay, so kind of two special case type of problems where you don't just get a single answer. Sometimes you get no answer. Sometimes you get infinitely many solutions. Okay, solving a linear inequality, um, we generally use the same rules, the same steps that we do if it's an equation. Um, there's one minor difference, uh, one exception uh, that if we find it in the problem, we'll all note it out. Um, but I begin this problem, same I begin any problem. This one requires a distributive property. So the minus sign distributes there and the 2 distributes here, giving me 4. That'll become plus 7 plus x is greater than 2x plus 6. Um, I'm going to combine these two numbers, give me 11 plus x is greater than 2x plus 6. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the x's onto the left. I'm going to bring the numbers onto the right. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract 11 from both sides. The result is negative x is greater than negative 5. I need to divide by the negative sign, which is really the number negative 1. And here is where I have to be careful with my inequalities. Anytime I multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality direction flips. So the greater than becomes less than 5. Now what I'd like to do is show this also on a number line. So let's see, we've got, let's just go with 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. Okay, that's good enough. I want to show all of the numbers that are less than 5. So I go to 5, I'm going to put a circle. Um, because it's just simply less than, we use an open circle. and. Which side of 5 are the numbers smaller than 5? Uh, the side of 5 is the left side. So there's our number line. And now I also want to write the interval solution. Okay, I want the answer to every problem in this lesson and inequalities in general going forward in interval notation. So interval notation is written like an ordered pair point. Um, so between what two numbers did I shade? 
Well, obviously five's on this end, but what number's on this end? If it keeps going forever, the number on this end is negative infinity. It's going to keep going out to the left forever. So my ordered pair is negative infinity comma five, and we use parentheses around negative infinity. I use parentheses around the five if it's an open circle. Okay. If this was a closed circle, I would use a bracket instead. And we'll see that on the next problem. But this one, because it's open, gets a rounded parenthesis. Okay, another example of an inequality. Um, again, this is a, I have another typo in this video. This D is supposed to be an X. Uh, in my defense, the D and the X are pretty close to each other on the keyboard, so it just happened. But let's use it as an X. Uh, I begin with a distributive property here and here, so we have negative 18x plus 40 plus 15x is less than or equal to 21x minus 56. I'm going to combine these x's to give negative 3x plus 40 is less than or equal to 21x minus 56. Okay, so now I'm going to move the 21x to the left. I'm going to move the 40 to the right. The result is that I have negative 24x is less than or equal to negative 96. If I divide by negative 24, I get x all by itself. Because I divide it by a negative, the inequality flips. And then 96 divided by 24 is 4. So I want x is greater than or equal to 4. Let's do this on a number line again. Okay, so I want all the numbers greater than or equal to 4. So I'm going to put a circle at 4. Because it's equal to, I'm going to fill in the circle. A filled in circle means that we can equal that number. Greater than side of 4 is everything to the right. And then I want to write my interval notation. So my ordered pair point that I'm shading between 4. And this goes out towards infinity, so 4 comma infinity. Infinity, just like before, gets a rounded parenthesis because we can't equal it. That's what rounded means. Four, in this case, gets a square bracket because uh, we are can equal four. So this notation tells the reader that start at four, but include four, and go towards infinity, which is what the number line shows.